guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to transform the 20 pieces of foam that you see here into these completely wearable across the Spider-Verse inspired Earth 42 Prowler Air Jordan 1 Highs complete with on off switch for the lights underneath the foot and the only difference between these and the ones in the movies is I decided against the utilitarian look that it has in the movie. It has a little stash uh, pocket on the side here and like a little fanny pack uh, in the back. I opted for a cleaner look, um, but if uh, this video does well enough and if you guys make enough noise in the comments about it, I'll probably consider doing a part two where I cover just those pieces as kind of like an add-on to this tutorial. But uh, in any case, let's get to it. All right, so I haven't done a really long tutorial in a while, so I thought it'd be a good idea to give you guys a list of some of the things you're gonna need uh, to get this project completed. So first off, some contact cement for sure. You're gonna want a, uh, some type of hobby knife, exacto blade with some fresh blades. We got some super glue some markers some scissors uh, this is a tiny little um, wireless dremel uh, but if you have like a, a rotary tool this is going to be super helpful to put uh, holes in your phone for like the lace holes and stuff like that a leather hole punch works just as well to do this uh, so does a soldering iron or a wood burner um, your heat gun definitely need that uh, you have also these little handheld uh, hole punches that you can get at uh, your leather shot some stiff fabric it doesn't really matter the color but uh, you want it to be a stiff fabric that doesn't stretch and obviously you're going to need your different foam sheets so you can look at the thicknesses here we have a two millimeter five millimeter and ten millimeter foam those are the foam sizes that we're going to be using for the tutorial as well as some specialty foam this is called a plastizote foam uh, it allows light to pass through um, So it has like this really nice feature You can also use some of like the cheap packing foam that sometimes you get with packages. It does just about the same It's a little more translucent and less dense than this is but you can substitute for whatever you have on hand and Last but not least, some type of clear plastic. Uh, here I have some eighth inch acrylic. You can go a little thinner than that or you can use any other type of plastic that you might have. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's start the tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is heat our and form our side panels now. All right, so for these guys, the longer one is always going to be the inner side of the shoe. So if you put these two on top of each other, heel to heel you will notice that there is one that is slightly longer than the other so that's how you differentiate which one goes on the inside part of the shoe versus the outside part of the shoe okay and if you haven't seen what a uh, the actual uh, air jordan looks like this is an actual shoe and you will notice that you know everything that we have here needs to get curved so this toe box needs to get curved this way right because the panel that we're installing is basically all of this right all the way around so back here big curve leading up to the back of the heel here curve inwards uh, for the inside of the foot so on and so forth so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the steps of heating and curving all of this up and I'll catch you guys for the next one All right, so after about 40 seconds of heating my phone up on both sides, I'm going to start curving. So I'm going to literally just start using my fingers to kind of start sculpting the foam a little bit to kind of make it uh, more three-dimensional. So here, I'm going to curve this back end to create uh, the heel of the shoe. Okay, on the inside lateral part here, I'm going to push this in, right, because that corresponds to this inner part of the shoe here. So we're basically trying to recreate the curvature of the shoe on the flat piece of foam. And then here we're gonna curve this in front also. We're also going to try to uh, round off the front by sticking two fingers in and pushing outwards. And in. It's almost like rolling it on itself to create that curved front of the shoe, okay? And then we're going to end up with 
something more or less like this. And you can obviously do a lot more curving if you'd like, but at the end of the day, when gluing this to uh, the first part of the sole, um, it's gonna help out a lot with maintaining a lot of the shape. So don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like what it should like, just make sure that it more or less has some type of a curvature to it. Um, so that mostly the heel and the front toe area um, have a nice curve. So go ahead and roll those back edges onto themselves to implement as much of a curve in those areas as possible. Okay. All right, more or less. And I mean, it's not gonna stand on its own. It might, yeah, there we go. So we went from, you know, a very flat piece to a more curved piece, as you can see from the profile here. So you wanna do that with the outer part as well. Again, making sure that you're heating and curving the correct side. So this is gonna heat and curve this way and connect in the front. All right, let's keep going. And once we've gotten a nice shape on both of our parts, we're going to go ahead and start assembling our shoe at this point. Uh, so we are working on the left shoe. You can start with the, with the right if you'd like. Uh, absolutely make sure that you are labeling all of your pieces uh, inside of the right shoe, uh, outside of the right shoe. Um, they look very, very similar and it's easy to get confused. So best bet is to work on one shoe at a time, just using the parts for your left shoe and then moving on to the right and just using the parts for the right. So we will start with the front or the back, doesn't really matter. While we wait for these to dry, we can start putting our glue as well on our first piece of our sole. Now this doesn't have to be pretty. You're not gonna see any of this stuff. So uh, this stuff can go pretty fast. Also putting the glue underneath our pieces. By the time we're done putting glue on all of the parts, considering that you went nice and light on your glue coats, we should be able to start assembling. Let's make sure that the glue is no longer sticky. Make sure that you are as flush as possible with your seams. So outside, let go. Front side. Okay. Both of these are going to be mostly hidden when we put the other uh, paneling stuff on. So now this is the tricky part. There's no indication of like how to center this. So what you're gonna want to do is basically look at this piece, okay? And just look at this circle and try to put a line that is centered to this circle here. And that is going to be probably perfect for starting to put this on. So now this back seam here is going to go right up on that line and then we can start putting this on. So I'll go ahead and do this one with you guys. So right there, place that down. You wanna to try to work the foam, right? And we're putting this on top of the piece of foam, okay? So we're working it around, making sure that it is nice and flush to the edge of our 10 millimeter piece. Around, same thing. 
Let's get flush. get closer to here so we can seal everything in as flush as we can and so now we basically have the base of the shoe already okay so that's gonna be step one okay so next step is going to be to put our toe guard so this is the part that's going to go here uh, this one's easy enough because this loop here matches with the loop on this side and this loop on the other side is a little bit wider and it matches with that. Uh, so what we're going to do is heat this up and you will notice that if you try to put this one down, for example, and just kind of like follow it over, it's not going to reach. And that's because we haven't heated this up and kind of pulled it and stretched it and formed it yet, right? Because it needs to be formed to the same shape. Uh, that we have going on the, on the toe here. So we're gonna hit right our heat gun. Okay, and now with our part heated, we're gonna go ahead and use our fingers. So uh, I'm basically using the round shape of my finger to kind of press into the foam and pull it. So I'm putting in a curve into it as I'm doing that. Curve, curve, curve. And as you're curving, you also want to pull and stretch this just a little bit uh, so that you can give it the length that it needs. Okay, so we went from a flat piece to something very circular here. So if we look at this now and we put it at its start point and wrap it around, all of a sudden it reaches the other side. Okay, so you're going to want to do this stretching and pulling until you have it reach both sides. And basically after this, go ahead and put some glue down and you can get a sense of where this starts and ends and put a mark there if you're trying to be clean with your glue. At this stage, it doesn't really matter just yet because a lot of this stuff is going to be covered by other parts. Uh, so we don't have to be super clean with it, but it's it's good practice to be clean anyway. So let's uh, let's pretend that we've been doing it the whole time. So right. So now I have a sense of where it is that my glue needs to go on the toe box here. So we're gonna grab our glue just like we did earlier. Once our glue is nice and tacky, we're gonna go ahead and start putting this on. Now you wanna isolate the part that you are not gluing yet uh, to make sure that you're only working with the foam uh, one section at a time. And you also wanna make sure that the bottom of this is flush with the seam of the upper to the bottom of the sole here, okay? As you're working this through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with you guys. So you're pushing and pulling and making sure that this falls on the seam at the bottom and also as flush as possible on top here in the shapes. Okay. So I'll do the top area first, make sure that that's as flush as possible. And then once I have that settled, I kind of pull it down to force it to meet exactly uh, at the seam below. Okay, so top to bottom, top to bottom, all the way around. And if as you're wrapping around, you feel like it won't reach, feel free to stretch it and pull it towards you. Make the foam do what you want it to do. It has a lot of elasticity. Um, Sometimes we think we're gonna get it to where we want it to be and it doesn't work out and it's easy enough to just push and pull and make it do exactly what we want it to, right? So that's landed flush right there. 
And then I'm gonna make sure that this lands flush all the way at the bottom here. Right. So now we have our tow guard installed. Okay. We can go ahead and kind of curl the lips a little bit, just so this kind of makes a fold that kind of goes in this way. Okay. All right, that's looking good. And if you wanted to clean it up or maybe you messed up, you can always take a, a rotary tool, uh, sandpaper to just kind of sand these two edges and make them as flush as possible. But I did a pretty good job on this one, so that's not gonna be necessary on my pair. All right, now, once we have this piece set up, which is the first thing you should do after you've made your base, this is going to give us an indication of where these side panels need to go. Uh, but, the inner one, again, is slightly longer than the outer one. On this one, barely, but still, um, you can tell, okay? And so, you're, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna make sure that you can see this line uh, lines up perfectly with this. I'm gonna wrap that around and make sure that they meet at the bottom. If this seam is gonna get covered anyway, so even if it doesn't work out perfectly, um, there's gonna be other parts that go on top of it that are gonna cover it up. All right, so this one I'm gonna fast forward. And I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, and as you can see, it wraps around lovely and goes right onto the back seam here. So with that done, the next step is going to be putting the uh, lace guards or eyelets. We have our two so the one that matches up to the right side is for the right and the one that matches up to the left side is for the left there are different enough shapes that you'll be able to notice which one is which okay uh you will notice that there are these uh lines here on the patterns this is for if you didn't want this area to be too bulky you can go ahead and cut that out uh and make this just kind of land flush so go ahead and take care of that so, yeah, like so. I'm gonna go right under the lace hole, making sure that you don't actually cut into it uh, for this step, so like that. Like this, All right, so I have this now cut out. Cutting out your holes for this part is going to be super useful in just making sure that everything is uh, you know like centered and aligned properly so that all of the holes match up make sure that everything's aligned I'm gonna go ahead and grab my marker and uh, this is where you want to start being neat with your uh, glue application because we're getting down to kind of the the top layers of the shoe so mark out where it is that you want to have your glue and then we're going to glue these in place just like we've been doing with everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. All right, so with that step out of the way, the next thing we're going to do is put the second part of our sole on. Now this is the part where we're going to wedge uh, these pieces of acrylic into our shoe. Uh, this can be like any hard plastic that you can find. This is basically to make it so that um, the white foam that we put on the inside of this like doesn't get dirty when you're walking around with it. And because uh, there's like another 10 millimeter of foam, it's this foam is also gonna prevent this plastic from being scratched or anything like that. So in any case, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this on here. So I'm gonna put a couple of hits of hot glue just to make sure that that doesn't slide uh, when we're walking with it. Just like top, bottom, left, and right. Okay. Make sure to apply this as cleanly as possible. Right. Again, bottom. This one's more of a triangle, so I'll only do like two 
three dabs. Just kind of hold it in place. Okay. Hold this with the foam to get my greasy fingers off of it. Just kind of let this cool down in place. Okay. So once that securely on there, we're going to use our contact cement and basically wedge and close this inside of this piece. Okay, we're really gonna have to force the foam around the plastic because it's gonna wanna bump out. Uh, all of this is gonna bottom out and feel pretty even once you start wearing this. So um, you're not really going to feel it. If anything, it's going to help with stability and structure uh, for the shoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the steps of adding the sole. Right, so this is done drying and if you really want it to be fancy you could even cut a strip that is uh, the width of this piece of foam and the length of this inner circle here to do like a carbon fiber lining on the inside here uh, you can go pretty crazy with this stuff but we're going to start from the back uh, use the hole as kind of like a visual to line everything up Okay. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm putting everything down on the clear uh, plastic plexi okay and then once I kind of have that you'll notice that there is a gap there so now I'm gonna start pressing this on the edges to close all of that up okay making sure that I'm getting it to be as flush as possible with uh, the top piece of foam that I'm squishing it onto. This is going to be further reinforced later. So if any, if there's any part that's kind of like giving you a hard time, uh, it's okay as long as most of it is sealed shut, um, it should be good. But. If you follow your shapes on the pattern, you shouldn't have any issues getting this to fit. Okay, press everything down, make sure it's nice and snug, All right? And so now we have the encapsulated acrylic that you can see through here. And then you can cut out these disc shapes. You want to make these slightly larger, ever so slightly, so that it doesn't kind of like float around, but it's like nice and tight. So as you can see, if I just put it there, uh, it's not really going in, but if I push it, then there's like a nice snug fit there. All right? And you can put uh, something in, underneath or in between the plastizote foam. This is a foam that allows light to pass through. Uh, I'll have links in the description uh, for this. But you can also feel free to put like a, a plastic pink transparent folder uh, cut out in between this and the clear acrylic. That way, if your lights are off, it still kind of looks like the underside of the shoe is pink and not just um, the white of the plastic if the lights are not on. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and slide these in for now just to kind of plug that and prevent any gunk from getting in here, okay? We still have quite a few more detail pieces to add actually. So we have the, the back uh, part here for the, the heel. We have the eye guards or the lace guards. I don't remember what these are called. Uh, those go on top here. Uh, your check if you're doing one, the collar, uh, eye guard thing in here, um, a bunch of uh, different bits. The reason why I'm kind of stopping right now and I'm going to start painting this is because I've already skinned my pieces. So as you can see, right, uh, this has like a nice texture and it has like a rubber feel to it. So basically what I've done is I've glued a fabric to my EVA foam. So in this case, you can see here, there's this really cool carbon fiber pattern. So I use the same contact cement. I don't think I'm gonna be able to separate this very well. Yeah, but the contact cement does a really good job at keeping the 
fabric to the foam. That way you can do different types of textures, different types of colors, uh, and not have to really paint uh, a lot of the parts and really give it a nice, clean, uh, uh, professional looking feeling finish. I actually use uh, purple suede, actual leather on these parts here. So I'm gonna paint mine. You guys can fast forward to the steps where I start putting all of the other pieces together. If you're doing this all out of EVA foam, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the only thing that I would say, and the reason why I'm mentioning this, if you are doing your toe in EVA foam as well, you're going to want to skin this, or at least back it, not so much skin it. So you're gonna grab a stiff fabric, okay? Just like we've been doing before, you're gonna put your contact cement down, you're gonna put contact cement on this, and you're gonna press it on there, and then you're gonna cut that out. This is the weakest part of this shoe. Um, when you start walking, if this piece is not reinforced, your shoe will rip on. All right, so we have our backed piece, okay? And we have our non-backed piece, all right? So we'll do a stress dust on this, pulling it, all right? That comes off. Do a stress dust on this. This is not going anywhere. It'll stretch maybe ever so slightly a little bit. <laughs> it will not break okay so this is what you want to do especially for something that you're going to wear you want to reinforce it make sure that it's nice and strong back it with a piece of fabric that is not stretchy so yeah this works really well you can reinforce all of your panels this way it doesn't just have to be the toe box but the toe box is uh probably the weaker link uh in this construction all right so you can see from my first prototype here, I started wearing it, everything was fine, but right here, big rip. And this is just foam. There's nothing else uh, backing this. So this is very, very weak and it won't hold up to stress at all. But if you back it with a stiff fabric, nothing's gonna happen to this. It's gonna be impossible to rip. Uh, the only thing that might happen is that um, it might unglue over time, but as far as like breakage is concerned, uh, that's not going to happen if you do this method. So worth mentioning before I started taking this to the next step. Uh, I've skinned a lot of my pieces, uh, some with this really cool hexagon rubber looking pattern, some with this cool carbon fiber uh, check. And you can see how uh, it comes out really nicely to just add different textures to the shoe. We're lucky that for this colorway, at least, of the... Uh, the Prowler uh, Jordan 1s, it's basically an all black shoe, which all black Plasti Dip is going to be our best friend because it kind of has a texture and it kind of looks like leather already. Uh, so it helps us out tremendously. So if you're doing any other type of colorway, um, this is something worth mentioning so that you can start prepping your different parts separately and then you can glue everything down onto your base uh, to keep it as clean as possible. That way you're not meticulously painting stuff. Not that anything's wrong with that, but um, it helps makes the process a little bit easier. Worth mentioning also, uh, for the actual Across the Spider-Verse shoe that uh, Miles wears, it is based off of the Jordan 1 Utility, which has like a little side pocket here on the inside, as well as like a little fanny pack pouch back here. Now, I've never been a fan of that look, so I didn't want to recreate it for mine. So I just wanted to get it as close as possible, but adding like my own flair and details to it. So, uh, but if you want to pattern that out and add it to yours to make it even more screen accurate, by all means, feel free to do so. Before we get to the paint booth, the basically outline of the midsole, which is the thin two millimeter strip that's going to cover uh, this outer edge here, we're going to want to do a little bit of prep to it uh, before we go into the paint booth. Uh, it's not a perfectly straight line, so you can cut it as a straight line, put it down and then trim the excess. Uh, so what you want to do is grab a Sharpie. So you see how there's just like this plastic lip here and then the, pla uh, the Sharpie starts. You want to put that plastic lip up against the edge of the foam and then trace that. That width is the perfect width for doing the score that we're going to do. 
Just make sure that you're doing this uh, consistently and keeping the same width throughout. If you do this with like a silver Sharpie, it'll come out uh, way better. I don't have one on hand, so hopefully you guys can see uh, the black lines that are being put down on this right now. Once that is down, you're going to want to grab a sharp blade, okay? And we're going to score into the foam. We're not cutting all the way through it, but we're just doing a really light nick on the surface that then we're going to be able to use our heat gun to open up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just very lightly following my line as straight as possible. Uh, try not to lift your knife as I just lifted my knife um, because you might end up uh, not being able to put it back on the exact path that you were before and then that's gonna look janky. So. And if I bring this up to you guys now, you can see all right, I've scored it, but I haven't cut all the way through it. So if I kind of fold it back, you can kind of see the opening, but I haven't cut all the way through it. So that's what we want to do. And we want to grab our heat gun. And we're gonna heat that up to kind of open it up. So as I heat this, that line should start to kind of open up, okay? And be a lot more visible than before. So if we're doing kind of like a, a compare and contrast, you can see where I've heated versus where I haven't. You can't even see the line where I haven't, but where I've heated, you already see this gap. So that's all we're doing is opening that up. And we'll be adding more details to this a little later, but at least at this stage, we can do this now so that we can plasti dip this as well uh, with this so we save time and kill two birds with one stone. All right, now let's go to the paint booth. Got my plastic dip and my respirator on. I'm sorry if you guys can't hear or understand me too well, but we want to be safe, all right? So I'm basically just going to do a couple of coats of plastic dip on the entire thing and then let that dry and then we'll get back to it in a little bit. With our part nice and plasti dipped and out of the paint booth, we can go on and complete the rest of our tutorial. So there are two parts that I am substituting for leather in this tutorial, but you will install your EVA foam pieces just as I will my leather pieces. I'm just doing this for the sake of the color because it's a nice color and it matches the original art style. And also for reinforcement, the leather on the toe box is going to be really nice. But again, remember that you can always reinforce your EVA piece if you're doing so. Okay, enough talking. So we're going to go ahead and do the toe box first. And what we're going to want to do here is I have these disappearing ink pens with heat. So I'm not afraid to kind of like mark this. But if you were doing this on foam, for example, you can kind of use like a pencil to lightly mark where you're gonna put this. So what I wanna do is basically give myself about a quarter of an inch at the edge of kind of like a margin and that is where we're going to be putting down our glue, just on that quarter of an inch. And then I want to use a fine brush and I'm going to apply my contacts in it. our pieces are prepared we're gonna want to start this on the side and you just want your curves to match up with your curves so I'm gonna make sure that this reaches the same area on the other side so there might be some pulling involved to make sure that things stretch and stay where they're supposed to 
and try to make sure that all of your glue uh, goes underneath uh, the lip of the toe. You don't want to see any of your glue on the edges as you do this. So just be mindful of that. you have this installed you can give it a little bit of a pull a tug a stretch you won't be able to do this as much with uh, the EVA foam especially if it's backed uh, but when you have a softer material like this you can kind of stretch it a little bit to kind of uh, customize the shape of the uh, the toe box but this is looking pretty good let's move on to the other parts so we're gonna do these side panels here I'm gonna go ahead and Trace these where they belong. Back panel, um, pretty easy. It kind of comes to a point right here and that should be right at the seam. And you just kind of like wrap this behind making sure that it presses back here. Wraps around the other corner the same way. And then the collar part, again, trace where the glue is going to be for that and glue that on as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through installing those pieces because they're fairly straightforward and I will catch you guys for the next steps. All right, now we will put our second check. I did put one of the checks uh, in between my plastic dip coats because this one is just regular matte and then the one on the outside is the one with the texture. Obviously, you guys can do, uh, you know, whatever design pattern you'd like. That's just the one that I decided to do for this build. All right, that's done. Uh, what you want to do with your heel tab is just put it on the back and just kind of move it around, force it. Mine's a little bit more rugged than it should be. You shouldn't have it. You shouldn't have as much of a problem with just the EVA foam, but because I have it uh, skinned with like this rubber thing, it's a little harder to pull and get into shape. But regardless, you just want to, you know, put this centered, wrap it around on both sides, just what we've been doing with everything else and just marking where it is that your glue needs to go and then gluing it into place. All right, our back panel is on, and now we can put our collar on. Before we close this up completely, remember we had put masking tape uh, inside to protect our foam piece. So let's go ahead and take those off. All right, so as far as electronics, I have two options for you guys. Uh, you can use these little things uh, that you can grab off of Amazon. Links will be in the description. Uh, they have a little push on off switch in the back here and they change to different colors. And the, the thing that I would say is before you uh, install this or before you wear your shoe for whatever event, you're gonna wanna get rid of or take apart the push switch back here. So that's fairly easy to do. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off. There are two pins that hold this thing on. So we just wanna take off those pins to remove this backing here. Okay. And right before we take it off completely, Go ahead and turn it on to your desired color and go ahead and just slide those pieces up. So now it's gonna stay on this color, even if you walk on it and it's not gonna change colors. Don't lose this, cause you, you wanna have this to be able to put back uh, when you're done. But it does have a little adhesive here that you can peel back 
and then you can glue that right where on top of your cup is and you can see the lights right through it so that's option number one option number two is you can use some fairy lights You can roll your fairy lights into two separate sections. Now they make these in all sorts of colors. Again, I'll have links in the descriptions um, of where to get yours. I do believe that the batteries on this last a little longer. The fairy light pack is like very bright for like the first 30 minutes, but then it dims down to about like 50% of its power, but it stays there for a very, very long time. Uh, it's just that these at least stay as bright as they are for at least a couple of hours uh, before they start dimming down. So, but two really good options um, for you guys for the electronics. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get back to the build. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install the tongue. We're going to go ahead and grab your heat gun, heat this up. You can just kind of like crinkle it and kind of give it a little bit more of a, an organic feel and try and soften it up a little bit. You don't want it to be too stiff um, as this is something that's going to be up on your ankle and stuff like that. Uh, you can also opt to do something completely different from this just like I deviated with this from EVA foam uh, to the piece of leather. I have this piece of uh, foam trimming. Uh, it's like the type of stuff that you see on like the roof of a car. So it's really nice and soft and padded. Uh, and I've backed this to a two millimeter uh, piece of EVA foam and it's given me the same thickness as this five millimeter piece. Um, and so that's gonna be something that one, adds texture uh, and, and more realism to the look you know, and also will be probably a lot more comfortable to wear. The pattern for the tongue is made purposely longer than it should be. And that is to be able to give you guys the option of customizing how uh, tall or low uh, you want the tongue to be. Uh, everyone's gonna have their own preference. Uh, normally, the tongue just goes a little bit past the top collar here. That's kind of what it looks like on the actual sneaker. And so that's the look we're gonna go for. So I'm about right here. Okay, if we're looking at the profile, the tongue just juts out just a little bit. And so I'm gonna use that particular position to mark the foam. I'm gonna go ahead and snip that off. Okay, two millimeter uh, piece of foam. So let's go ahead and cut the out give us the same amount but gives our give ourselves a little room to glue to the underside so I've replicated this general shape but I gave myself kind of like a half inch margin here to glue to the back side of this so go ahead and do that We basically have the same length that we had again, except our hinge is a lot softer uh, and should help us with a better, more comfortable fit on foot. So go ahead and put now glue on the top piece. It's going to glue to the underside of the toe and also put some glue inside of our toe. So before we go and install our tongue, let me show you guys how to install the fairy light option. So I have here some uh, pink slash magenta colored ones. So I'm gonna grab some tape and I've bundled my lights into two even like eight shaped uh, parts. So it's basically bundling them into a circle and then twisting them into like an H shape. Uh, this is to prevent them from moving around too much. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on 
on top of them. Slide them into place. And tape them down. You want to make sure that you have your light on for this step because uh, you want to make sure that you're taping it down perfectly centered to uh, your foam. That way the diffusion is nice and even. You get over to this side. And tack that down. And you can also cut a two millimeter piece of foam that you can slide in here as an insole. Uh, making sure that that two millimeter piece doesn't make the inside of the shoe uh, too tight for you to wear. So this is nice and secured. As you can see, it is lit. I'm also going to put for the single strip that's connecting the two, I'm gonna put one long piece of tape that holds that down. That way this doesn't move when we're walking or inserting our foot or anything like that, okay? Place this where I want to place it. And you could even make like a little pocket for this to slide in. Uh, there's a bunch of different little things that you can do to customize this. So I made a strip out of the uh, textured stuff that I had for all of my other pieces. And that's gonna be enough to kind of hold that there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that and I'm gonna glue that in place. And that should be all set for electronics. We can go ahead and install the tongue after that. You just wanna make sure that you have this as centered as possible. So stretch the toe box out. And then install this where you feel it is the most centered. Um, sometimes it might be a good idea to offset it. So as you're trying on the tongue, do make sure to put on the shoe at this point to make sure that where the tongue rests is actually good and it doesn't like rotate left or right when you actually wear it. But uh, so far, so good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on real quick just to get a sense of where I need to put the switch. All right, I figured out a good position. And for me, it was about a half inch, or should I say a full inch away from those two holes. That's where my battery rests. It doesn't touch my ankle bone or anything like that. Uh, that's where it felt the most comfortable. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue my piece there. So now I can slide the cable to the left side of the battery pack and find my slit. Slide my battery pack towards the ankle. You do want to make sure that this is a tight fit because you don't want this sliding around when you're walking. And so, right, so we're here. You can turn the lights on. Off, on. All right, so the last big thing we're doing is putting the skin of our outsole on the side of our shoe. So with our long piece that we had cut out earlier, we're gonna take this and fold it in half. Okay, just to get a, a sense of where the start point is. And we're going to put that as centered as we can to the front of the shoe, okay. and then wrap that around. Now, as you're wrapping this around, you're going to want to barely come up over everything else that we had on here, okay? which means if I put a mark on here to show you guys, hopefully you can see this. All right, this rides up the side by a little less than a quarter of an inch. So you don't want this going up too high, um, but you do want to seal everything else along with it, okay? So keep that in mind and we're going to go ahead and put our glue down, making sure that we put glue on the toe box, the lace guard here, the back heel tab, 
all of those things by slightly, maybe like two millimeters, just so it could cover that a little bit. So it seals everything in as we wrap it around. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on the back of this, fast forward through those steps, and then catch you guys for the wrap around. Find your center. We'll start from the very front as centered as possible. Okay. Here we go. A little bit on the lip. And we're going to start the process of wrapping this around. Making sure that we are hitting just a little bit of the side walls of everything else. And you might find that the, the pattern for this strip is longer than it needs to be. That's perfectly fine. So do one half almost to the back. Don't finish gluing the back yet, okay? And then start your other half. And find the overlap. Kind of see it there. Cut the overlap nice and straight. And you can put some super glue or maybe some more contact cement there to kind of make sure that those edges meet as flush as possible. Don't need a lot. Okay. Close that out and make sure that the two edges are touching. Okay. And then make sure you press everything into place so that it bites on nice and lovely onto all of your parts. All right, here we go. Looking good. Okay. Uh, in the movie, and you, you, you'll notice it here, so basically I've gone back in and cut another quarter inch line, but at the bottom, okay? The only difference between this one is it has a slight curves that comes up at the very front and then comes right back out. So that's the reason why I didn't do it while it was still flat, because I didn't know exactly where this was going to end. But now that it is flat, I can go ahead and make that change. So again, you can just kind of go in with some type of pen or pencil and just kind of make a mark on the side of your phone that you can follow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and freehand this except for the curve part. So I'm gonna put the curve part down so I know where that starts and ends. And then everything after that is pretty straight. So, uh, I'm going to start on the back end. Okay, just try to keep a nice consistent line. Again, I'm freehanding this. You don't have to. You can definitely put lines down to make sure that you're following uh, a straight line. And just like before, try not to lift the blade. As you're cutting this, keep the blade inserted into the foam uh, the entire way. Because there is Plasti Dip on this now, you do want to put a little bit more pressure on it because um, it'll tend not to cut as deep as you would want it to. All right. If you did this at all, and you can do this detail with like a wood burner, I just kind of transfer over your lines and burn this detail into it. It's basically the outsole of the shoe. It's not absolutely necessary. Um, but where these lines meet the edge of the sole here, you're gonna want to do a straight line that comes from that line that we just did into those. So kind of like this. So that's gonna end up looking like this on the outer edges. And you can see each one of those corresponds to those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. OK, 
Okay, and once all of our lines are in, we're gonna use the heat gun method one more time to open up all of these score cuts that we just made. Be sure not to keep the heat in one area for too long. Just keep it moving. You don't want to burn your foam at this point. You've done too much work to mess it up now. All right, looking good. Our little lines are opened up. Just make sure to kind of press everything back in place because the heat will usually release the glue. So on the edges there, make sure that everything is holding on as it should. Okay, then the last bit of detail that we can do is just add some decorations to the back here to kind of hide the last of our seams back here. All right, and so for that, I've made a little piece here that's wrapped in the same material that the uh, outer swoosh is to kind of hide this seam here. Only thing I'm gonna have to do is to kind of just cut it so that it follows the curve of this purple piece. Yep. General shape of them. Like so. Go ahead and jot that down. Okay. Fold over and attach on the inside as well. And then I cut out a two and a half long piece of pink leather that's going to uh, eventually match the laces that we're putting on this. This is going to glue like this. It's gonna fold on itself. And then this piece is gonna get glued just to this back piece here, not the swoosh parts, just this extra piece here in between the swoosh and the purple right there. Right. Put on a little tab. And if there are purists in the comments, yes, I know that the Jordan 1 does not have a pull tab, but mine does. And if you wanted to know what the actual back of it looks like, it's not a pull tab, it just kind of goes in and wraps into these two sections. So the swoosh and this extra piece right there. Um, but if you're going screen accurate, it has a utility pack on the back, so it probably doesn't even have all of this stuff to begin with. But because I don't have it, I still want the back of the shoe to look nice. Right? And that's where we're at. And so the only thing left for us to do at this point is to uh, lace these bad boys up and try them on. Looking good, and of course, no project is complete without a little bit of self-promo. A little give wave tongue tag. Wrap that around. Obviously, you can make this any color, any design you would like. But, uh, the boy's got to rep his own. And there you have it, guys. We made it. If you made it through this far, you have completed your Earth 42 Prowler Miles Air Jordan 1. Not utility, but close enough. Uh, and at least we have the LED lights, which is nice. All right. So I hope this one was useful to you guys. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, Feel free to let it be known in the uh, comment section. And um, if you guys have any ideas of what you think I should do next, also uh, sound off in the comments. In any case, that's been all for this one. This has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.